Hey guys, Stevie here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to recreate the So Far Gone cover by Drake. It's his 10 year anniversary, that's why I'm making this video. I'm also going to be making a video on how to recreate the If You're Reading It, It's Too Late um, cover art as well. And it's it's 4 year anniversary today as well, so there's two anniversaries today. So I'm going to start off with um, the So Far Gone cover. There's actually two variations of this cover. The one you see on streaming services right now is the EP version, the extended play. And that one has a white background and it isn't as cool. I'm gonna be showing you the black version, which is a lot cooler. If you guys enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. So right here we're in Photoshop and we've just created a black canvas. So this is a 1920 by 1920 and there's a black background. So this is the background and this is the original cover. So let me just hide this. I already started with the bottom because the bottom is going to be the same. I'm actually going to be changing this cover so that it says Drake. If you're reading this, it's too late. Um, so I'm actually going to kind of mix the two. Um, covers together. So essentially this is what kind of stands out from this cover is how the text is tilting back and forth. You can see the bottom right here. The text is sort of just normal, right? But as you progress upwards, it's tilting here and there. And as you notice, it starts by shifting right and then it moves left. And the higher it gets, the less words there are. So you want to take that in mind when you're creating your own. You can also see by observing that some of the letters are bigger than the other ones in like in a word. So like very right here, the V is kind of bigger. The R is kind of bigger as well. Like the E is the smallest right here. Um, right here, A N. The A is much bigger. The B is bigger in this one. The D is way bigger. So it starts with the artist name, then the album name, and then in October's very own presentation. So whatever way you want to customize this, you can do this to your liking. I'll actually be releasing a template for this just for the general structure of this cover art. So if you guys want that, uh, get this video to 250 likes and I'll leave it in the description. So as you can see here, um, the O and the B, they maintain balance somehow. Like, like you can see O and B kind of balance each other out and then the N somehow is just there and then the E balances out. Like there's a lot of balance in this. It's kind of like a juggling act as you can see, like ends up being on the left side when it leans toward the right like I mentioned before. And what I realized when uh, trying to recreate this cover was there's actually no skewing or distortion of the text. It's literally just rotated a little bit, like tilted a little bit, and the sizes are just a bit different in variation. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into it. So like I mentioned before, I already started this off so you can see the bottom. Uh, let's just hide this layer and put back the black layer. I want to recreate this for if you're reading it, it's too late, or reading this, it's too late. I am obviously not gonna write that entire phrase because it's gonna take so long. So I'm just gonna use an acronym. I, F, you're reading this, it's too late. So it looks something like this. And I'll also be putting the font uh, in the description as well. I'm not sure if this is paid. I've had this font for a long time, but if it is paid, I'll be putting a lot of different fonts that are similar. So this one's called Aubrey Graham, which is his name. Um, there's one called Reboard and uh, I think Futura Heavy Bold that are very similar, but they're not exactly the same. What's special with this font is you see where the R is right here. There's no like space in the middle. So like in a normal R, there would be like a, you know, like a semi circle, but here it's filled up. So you can see in some other letters like um A, you can see that it's filled up. I don't think O is, but you can see it's a little bit different from normal traditional letters because of like the, the space that's filled in. You actually want to type them separately. I'm just showing you as a reference to see how you can just put it on top. So you want this to be a juggling act, like a balancing act. So you can see here, what will happen is pretend you just drop this on top of this uh, row right here. What will happen is this I will move right, this Y will kind of stay the same, and this R will kind of be between these two letters. But you also want to take in mind that it shifts left as the text goes up. So you want to actually kind of do the opposite. So you can see how it shifts left because it lands on this part right here. If it lands on this part it will like shift right if you just think about it so what i'll have to do is i'll have to make the text smaller so it lands within this space right here from the o to like around the b so let's just make it smaller so something like that and i'm just gonna start with the i first and i'm gonna start from there so maybe i can make it a little bit bigger because there's gonna be a variation in size so it doesn't have to be the same size for every letter and as I mentioned before the top letters are kind of bigger so you can make it bigger if you want so I'm going to make this land right on top of the O because I don't want it tilting really. If you're, so this is a Y. So this could tilt a little and land in between 
these two letters and you also want to sort of have the same amount of space in between the letters so this right here is not so good like down down here because they're kind of really close like there isn't even a space between these letters so i'll have to fix that for the template also if you're using this font if you want the letters to be filled uh so for example this r we'll have to capitalize the letter so this is a lowercase r and if i make it uppercase it fills in the the r so if you want to fill it in that's what you'll have to do so if you're reading, so R, I don't think I'll fill this in just because I want to make it a little bit different from the bottom. So let's not fill it in. So let's just make it a normal R and this maybe tilt a little this way because if it lands right there, you know, it'll push a little. This is like, you know, if you know a little physics and a little gravity, then you'll be good at this. Let's actually make it a little bit bigger, something like that. If you're reading this, so it's a T. So this one will be able to tilt left a little. And you can see the gap between this, like it's sort of the same, not really, but just make sure there's at least a little bit space between uh, the letters. Reading this, it's, so I'm gonna make this kind of lean toward the T. So how could I do this? I don't think it can just because of how it looks like. So yeah, and then L, maybe we can get the L to lean toward the I. It's so something like that. So there we have it. I think it actually fits really well. And now we just need the Drake part. It's gonna be a little bit smaller than So Far Gone because So Far Gone's three words. If you're reading it's too late, it's like five letters or something. If you wanna be exact, you can just sort of, uh, sort of follow the lead of this background photo right here. So it goes from one letter to one letter to one letter to two letters and then it expands. So if you're an artist and you want to be making this your cover art or use this as inspiration, you kind of wanna follow that format. Also, I've done the Thank Me Later cover as well, if you want to see the breakdown of that. So you can see here, the K is smaller than the E, so you want to also kind of look at varying the sizes as well. If it's a longer word, there will definitely be a bigger letter. So October's right here will definitely have one because it looks kind of plain if it's just normal size. And um, with the exception of presentation, because presentation is kind of the building block, so you can't have like a shaky building block. I know this is kind of unpleasant to look at, but uh, this is sort of the process. And then colon. So it looks like it doesn't match up that much. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a separate one where it's just like a period. I just make two periods because it doesn't really line up. There, control J to duplicate and then move up. Okay, so we're basically done. So let's just hide this layer and uh, we can move the D R A K E down. So let's find the D R K E colon. So this right here, you're gonna press control T and then now you can just shift it downward. So you wanna move it to where it makes most sense. So I think toward this side makes more sense in terms of balancing. And if we hide this again, we can add this little guy right here. So let me just use the eraser tool. I don't wanna erase the guy. Actually, you might wanna just line them up. I think that should be good. If you are reading this, it's, oh, I forgot a T. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I think we're going to have to shift the letters a little bit. So actually you can just shift the L shouldn't be that hard. It's going to be sort of not really centered that much, but you know, none of this is really centered. Let's make this a little smaller then. Yeah. It doesn't look that bad. If you're reading this, it's too late. Okay. Actually make the L smaller because I feel like there's too many big letters on the right side now, but now it's good. And yeah, that's about it. Some key concepts to take away from this video. You want to keep the bottom as structured as possible. So like the first row should be structured and just like normal. You want to either decide to go right or left and whatever path you choose. So if you want to um, lean toward the right at first, you're going to have to eventually go toward the left as you move up. Also, as you move up, the letters are going to sort of get smaller in terms of like how many letters you put in a row. So as you can see on the screen, Screen. The top three rows ends up having just one letter. The fourth row has two letters and it's really just eyeballing it and um, just seeing what fits. Like I mentioned before, you want to think about if you just dropped it down, how would it balance itself out? So if you uh, drop the Y in between these two, like this little crack right here, it makes sense that it's leaning toward the left. The, the I right here, it makes sense that it's um, just there because it's in the middle of the O. The R, you can see how it makes sense as well. You just want to make sense of it all. So if you wanted to use the template and you want to recreate this for yourself, um, it's not that hard. Like pretend I want to do productions. I can just change it here, maybe shift it a little right until the end hits. You want to go row by row. So it's easier to change the bottom. So if you want to change this to production, it'd be easy. But as you go upwards, it's going to be hard. But I, I sort of just wanted to create the template just for the structure and the style of the cover art, which is 
the bottom should be like your label your team you know like dream chasers or like me batch music or like rock nation or something like that and as you go up it's the project so it's whatever or song it could be a song like it could be uh whatever your song is and then the artist name and it doesn't have to be this little guy looking at the money it could be literally anything like you can decide to put like a goat at the top you know what i mean so yeah hope you guys enjoy this video hopefully it helps you out my name is steven and i'll see you in the next one